누구나 한 번쯤 꿈에 그리던 이스라엘 여행 하지만 인터넷에 찾아봐도 쉽게 얻을 수 없는 이스라엘 여행 정보 그래서 브레드TV가 야심차게 준비했습니다 이스라엘 여행 정보 커뮤니티 고고 이스라엘 스마트폰이나 인터넷으로 고고 이스라엘에 접속해서 쉽게 이스라엘 여행 정보를 찾을 수 있습니다 찾기 쉽게 분류된 이스라엘의 여러 도시들과 지역들을 선택하여 도시 속의 숙소, 먹거리, 관광지 등 수많은 정보를 아주 쉽게 검색할 수 있습니다. 호텔, 호스텔, 고급 식당, 길거리 음식, 쏟아지는 이스라엘 여행 정보들 중에 내 취향에 맞는 정보들만 쏙쏙! 고고 이스라엘은 가이드가 데려가지 않았던 숨은 명소를 찾아주어 나만의 이스라엘 여행을 만들어 나갈 수 있게 해줍니다. 여기서 끝이 아닙니다. 김종철 감독이 전해주는 이스라엘 여행 팁 그리고 여행을 다녀온 유저들의 솔직 담백한 리뷰와 평점까지 내 손안에 고고 이스라엘과 함께라면 혼자 떠나는 이스라엘 여행 더 이상 두려워할 필요 없겠죠? 이스라엘엔 생각보다 훨씬 더 다양하고 멋진 여행이 기다리고 있습니다. 이스라엘 여행의 처음과 끝 고고 이스라엘 지금 바로 확인하세요. I had one in a very Jewish area in Florida, Boca Raton, Florida. We had 350 unsaved Jewish people. Why did so many unsaved Jewish people come? Because they are interested in the supernatural. They are interested in miracles. I did one recently in Israel. Why did so many, a thousand Israelis came? Why did so many that do not believe in Jesus? Why did so many come? They're interested in miracles. And 200 of them instantly say they have miracles. There's nothing fake. They don't even believe in Jesus. Most of them aren't even sure that God is personal. And then, because of the miracles, they make Jesus their Lord. I believe nothing happens without prayer. I believe that maybe someone hasn't prayed, but someone else has prayed for that person. Like when I have all these miracles with Jewish people, if there was not prayer, I would not have them, I don't believe. Uh, there'd be a few, but not so many. I've, I believe that the greatest weapon God has given to us is prayer. But pray according to the Bible, even pray the Bible. There's a prayer in Romans 11, all Israel shall be saved. Many people falsely think that that means uh, uh, just before Jesus returns. But I've proven that we are at what the Bible calls the fullness of the Gentiles. The word fullness in the Greek can also be translated maturity. And Jesus said in uh, uh, Luke 21, 24, that partial, uh, that Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. In 1967, it was in Jewish hands. So that's evidence one, we're at the fullness or the maturity of the Gentile age. 
Evidence two is Romans 11.25. Partial blindness has happened to Israel until the fullness of the gent the maturity of the Gentiles comes in. So therefore, the spiritual scales are being removed, but we're not following God's plan to reach the Jew. You cannot reach a Buddhist, a, a Hindu, uh, 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 anyone of another religion through the mind. But a miracle breaks through to the spirit, and they, it's like the blindness comes off the spirit, and you can see the truth. So we're living in a new season for Jewish people right now. And I, my job is to say, wake up. The Jewish person that crosses your path is not there by accident. I desperately need, I need something. I need people praying for me. Because the more prayer I get, the more miracles. The more miracles, the more Jewish people that receive Jesus. Um, and uh, so I, I believe God doesn't move one little finger until a Christian prays. 알겠습니다. 근데 모든 크리스천들이 하나님의 기적을 다 경험할 수는 없어요. 어떤 사람은 하나님의 기적을 경험하기도 하고 또 어떤 사람은 그 기적을 목격하기도 하고 그런데 또 어떤 사람은 전혀 기적을 경험하지도 못하고 목격하지도 못한 사람들도 있습니다. 기적을 경험하지 못한 사람이 기적을 경험한 사람에 비해서 스스로 나는 믿음이 작은 것이 아닌가 이런 생각을 할 수도 있을 것 같아요. I don't believe that. I believe you're a person of little teaching in that area. You can't receive Jesus unless someone teaches you the gospel. Uh, you, faith is contagious. If you're surrounded with people and a teacher that teaches the supernatural, you'll have faith for it. It's not that you are inferior in any way. You have faith for what you've been taught. You need to have teachers that will teach you how to operate in the supernatural. The Bible says God is not a respecter of persons. That means he'll use anyone and everyone. I quoted Joel chapter 2 a little earlier. God says, I, God, will pour out my spirit on all flesh. If you have, if Jesus is your Lord, you have, that means Jesus is living inside of you. Don't tell me Jesus can't perform miracles. Of course he can. 목사님께서 이제까지 많은 기적의 체험자들을 만나시고 또 간증도 들으셨을 텐데 목사님께서 생각하시게 정말 우리는 마지막 때 살고 있고 또 주님이 우리를 향해서 다시 오시는 그 발걸음 소리가 더 크게 들려오고 있다. 이렇게 생각하십니까? I had a dream in which God came to me in the dream, and he said to me, I am coming soon, I'm coming soon. That's number one, that's personal. Number two, Jesus said, the generation that sees the fig tree blossom, a fig tree is a type of Israel, that's the Jews returning to the land, that's the desert, blossoming as a rose, Isaiah 35, 1. That generation will not pass before I come again. The key, prophetically, to the timing of the return of Jesus is Israel. When the United States of America's president recently said, we will move our embassy to Jerusalem, all of heaven got moving fast, very fast, because that Jerusalem must be the capital of the Jewish people for end times to occur. And when, when that occurred, some, there's a scripture that's very important for your people to understand. Genesis 12, 3. God says, not man, God says, I will bless those who bless the Jewish people. 
The greatest blessing of the Jewish people is to tell them about Jesus. There's no close second. That's the greatest way. The purpose of a miracle is not the miracle. The purpose of the miracle is to earn the right to share Jesus with those people that you're talking to. Uh, I, I believe that we are so close to the return of Jesus and God's heart is breaking for not just the Jewish people, but all people. And that's why he's going to increase the miracles to get as many people saved as possible. 목사님께서 쓰신 마지막 부흥을 위하여라는 책을 제가 읽고 왔습니다. 근데 이 책을 읽다 보니까 구약 성경의 에스더서가 교회의 종말에 관한 책이다. 이런 글을 쓰셨는데 굉장히 인상 깊게 읽었습니다. 왜 에스더서가 교회의 종말을 이야기한다라고 생각하십니까? Yes, I see every person in the book of Esther uh, as an end time person. For instance, um, I see Esther as a type of the Gentile church. I see Haman as a type of the devil. So what did Haman want to do? He wanted to kill all the Jewish people. Why? Jesus said, I will not return in the, till the Jewish people say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The devil in his warped thinking believes if he can destroy the Jewish people, he can stop Jesus from returning. So in the book of Esther, the only way the Jews were not killed was Esther said, I want you to fast with me for three days and pray and a God will give us a strategy. So what did, was the strategy? The Jews could defend themselves. How could we defend ourselves? We were given the sword, it says in the book of Esther. The sword is a type of the word of God. You can't defend yourself unless you know the new covenant, which there's nothing new in the new covenant. It's all in the Old Testament also, but kind of hidden. But it's all really very concise in the New Testament. And when the Jewish people defended themselves because they had the word of God, it says revival broke out among the Gentiles. Every Gentile Christian that believes in Jesus owes a debt of gratitude because some Jew 2,000 years ago was faithful to take the word to the Gentiles. That's why Jesus said salvation is of the Jews. The original salvation of the world started with a Jew, God in human form, Jesus, Yeshua. And then the first people he shared the gospel with were Jews. And the job of the Jew was to take the gospel to the Gentiles. And we did a good job. I believe that just before Jesus returns, if you study Romans 11, you can find out what will happen. It says in Romans 11, if it was a blessing that the Jewish people rejected their Messiah, and the Gentiles could be grafted in. That was a blessing. How much greater blessing when the Jewish people received their Messiah? Why? We are created by God to evangelize the world. And that's why most Gentile Christians don't share Jesus with anyone. But few share Jesus with Jewish people. I always have been concerned about the underdog. And I see Jews as the underdog because even those Christians that love the Jew will just do humanitarian work, which is admirable. I commend them on humanitarian work. But they'll eliminate the gospel because they want to be loved by the Jewish people. I say 
do the best humanitarian work you can, but then do the greater humanitarian work. Share Jesus. 그리고 이 책에서 유대인과 이방인이 하나 돼야 한다라는 얘기를 여러 차례 강조를 하셨습니다. 왜 유대인과 이방인이 하나 되는 것이 중요한지 그 얘기를 좀 해주시죠. It's in the New Testament. You're talking about Ephesians, the second chapter, and in the second chapter, it says that God is going to form one new man. But the Greek word for man can be translated humanity, so it's not a man or a woman. It's one new humanity. And this new, new humanity is neither Jew nor Gentile, but made up of Jew and Gentile. The new humanity is Jews and Gentiles with Jesus inside of them. It, in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 21, it's, it says, when, the, when this occurs, the glory of God will appear. And that is what we're all believing God for. His glory will appear. His glory is His manifest presence. And when that happens, we will not say, I don't know if God heals people today. They will go into a church. No man will pray for anyone. I won't pray for anyone. You won't pray for anyone. You won't pray for anyone. But the glory of God will sweep right through that church and everyone in the church is going to be healed. And everyone will know that it's Jesus. But for the glory of God, Jesus says in, in, in uh, John 21, the same glory that is on me when Jew and Gentile become one new humanity will be on them. That's what I'm waiting for. Somehow, the church is incomplete without the Jewish believer. Somehow, the church is incomplete without the Gentile believer. Somehow, when the two merge into one new humanity, it makes a complete dwelling place of God. It says in Ephesians by the Spirit. 이 마지막 때 우리 믿는 자들은 주님이 다시 오심을 기다리는 크리스천들은 어떻게 살아야 됩니까? 또 목사님은 어떤 마음 자세로 기도를 하고 계십니까? As a Jewish non-believer in Jesus, the people that were telling me about Jesus prayed in supernatural languages like they did at Pentecost. And they all these Jews were gathered there and they heard language they heard these Jewish people talking in languages when the fire of God came on them at Pentecost that was their language. It even says in the Greek their dialect, which is even more specific. I saw that and it intrigued me as a non-believer. And I have found, personally, the, uh, in, the God, in, in the Gospel of Mark, uh, the last chapter, it says, those who believe in the name of Jesus will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. That's me. I believe in the name of Jesus. Those who believe in the name of Jesus will cast demons out of people. That's me. That's you. But I believe in the name of Jesus. Those that believe in the name of Jesus will speak in unknown tongues. That's me. Big confusion. Any area that will reach unsaved people, there's big confusion. The confusion comes from the devil. It says in the Bible very clearly that a time will come when tongues will cease. But that's talking about when the return of Jesus occurs. Until then, you still can speak in tongues. I remember as a new Jewish believer, 
So, and this is how I pray, because it says in the New Testament, when you pray in supernatural languages, you pray mysteries. You worship God well. I didn't realize this, but I put my hand on someone this many years ago. I was a new Jewish believer on a Filipino doctor. He was a professor of doctors at a major university in Washington, D.C., uh, where I was living at the time. And I prayed in my supernatural language. And this is what I said to him. You must give your life to Jesus. But I said it in the Filipino language. I don't speak one word of the Filipino language. And then he looked at his wife, who was Filipino, and he thought his wife told me the words to use. But then he realized his wife spoke a different dialect than he spoke, so his wife could not have even done that. And he became a strong believer in Jesus. It says in Romans, the eighth chapter, we don't know how to pray as we ought. So with groanings and utterances that we don't understand, we will pray. That is supernatural languages. I, the Holy Spirit within me knows what's going to happen to me today. If I pray in tongues or supernatural languages in the morning. Before I go out, the Holy Spirit, who knows everything, knows that a car is going to head towards me and go through a light, and I'm going to hit that car. Well, do you know, because I prayed, remember I said nothing happens until someone prays? Because I have prayed, I'll get the thought, I'm going to go down a different road. It's the most wonderful thing in the prayer. They're perfect prayers when you pray in tongues. That's why Paul said, I pray with my understanding. That's what I, I know to pray. You know your unsaved relatives. You know what's going on in your country. You see what's going on in Israel. I pray with my understanding. And I also pray in the Spirit. So I do both. I pray what I know to pray with my intellect, but my intellect is limited. It only knows what I know. It's like a computer. It only knows what you put in there. But my spirit knows everything. It's the most wonderful thing to pray in supernatural languages. So I, that's how I pray mostly. I pray in supernatural languages. And it says when you pray in tongues, uh, in the New Testament, you edify yourself. The word edify means you charge up and build up your spirit. You edify your spirit. And so if I had x-ray vision to look at spirits inside of people, the ones that are praying in tongues every day, their spirit is bigger than their natural body. And the ones that are not, it's not. Now, to look at someone, I'm not going to know. But I'll tell you one thing. You want to see miracles? Pray in supernatural language. I personally have prayed with thousands in soup that have started speaking. Thousands that have started speaking in supernatural languages. I can't give it to anyone. But God's desire is for you and for you to have every gift he has. I mean, because he's the one that gets the credit, not you, not me. I'm just a house that he lives in. I'm the house. He's the one doing all the work. <laughs> 이제 테라비브에는 미국 대사관도 예루살렘으로 옮겨온다고 하고요. 또그 뒤에 팔레스타인을 비롯해서 아랍 국가들이 또 가만히 있을 것 같지 않은. 그야말로 이스라엘과 예루살렘은 깊은 혼돈에 빠질 것 같은데 지금 이런 상황에서 우리 믿는 자들이 이스라엘과 예루살렘을 위해서 기도한다면 어떤 기도를 해야 할까요? Now this will surprise you. I'm going to tell you something important to pray for. Pray that South Korea moves their embassy from Tel Aviv <laughs> to Jerusalem. That would be, that would mean a big thing to Israel, a big thing. I, I would pray that. 
Um, I believe that this is, as I said, is speeding up end times. And uh, one country, another country has said they're moving their embassy to Jerusalem. I'm waiting for South Korea to do this. 그동안 목사님께서는 이 자리에서 많은 게스트들에게 질문을 하시고 주로 게스트들의 답을 듣는 그런 자리였는데 오늘 이렇게 제가 질문하고 답변을 하는 입장이 바뀌었어요. 오늘 인터뷰해 보신 소감 좀 어떠십니까? You are a very good interviewer. Thank you. <웃음> <웃음> 건강은 좀 어떠십니까? Oh, I'm getting younger. <웃음> oh, that's it. Every time I go to sleep at night, God restores all of my cells. I, I am 77, and you watch me over the years. I'm going to be getting younger. There, people hear me say that, and they get so upset, they throw things at the television. But I'm getting younger. <laughs> 한국에도 한 번쯤 오셔야죠. 한국에 오실 계획은 없으십니까? If God wills, I will be there. I hear about a place called Prayer Mountain that interests me a lot in Korea. Uh, Pastor Cho, Paul Young Yi Cho, started a mountain where they pray. I like that. And I've noticed something about Koreans in my observation. Koreans are not like American Christians. When they really get it, they can pray better than any people group I know. 알겠습니다. 한국에 언제 오시게 될지 모르겠지만 오실 때까지 계속해서 건강하시고 하나님께서 주신 이 방송 사역 잘 감당하시기를 저희도 기도드리겠습니다. 오늘 이렇게 이 귀한 자리에 초대해 주시고 긴 시간 동안 인터뷰해 주신 우리 시드라스 목사님께 감사합니다. Thank you very much. Thank you for your gracious.이스라엘성교전문방송브레드TV이스라엘을위해기도하고싶으신데기도제목을잘모르시겠다고요그럴땐이스라엘전문방송브레드TV로들어오시면됩니다.언제어디서나시청가능한브레드TV.매번주소검